Michael Mayo is with Wells Fargo. He's been doing this more than a long time and has always done it with a certain vigor, which upsets the executives and is required reading for everyone on the street. Mike Mayo, great to get an update from you. Let me go to the money question. They're lining up the accountant ducks of losses that will be taken down the road. Do you know what those losses will be taken down the road, or do you, like everybody else, have to wait, wait, wait? Well, these are some of the most uncertain times, Tom, that I've seen in my three decades of covering banks. But we do have the results in for the eight largest banks. And the conclusion is you've seen the twin peaks of pain. The provisions for future loan losses relative to the actual losses these past two quarters have been the highest in history. And the second pit of, bit of pain is that the decline in the net interest margin these two past quarters has been the biggest in history. So there's a double barrel shotgun you know, pointed at the banks in terms of credit losses and NIM compression, and that's huge pain. But let me point out, like, this is not 2008. It's 2020. Banks are now part of the solution, not part of the problem. The war chest for future losses, whatever they will be, uh, is the highest in history at this stage of a recession in the past 50 years. The reserves for the largest banks equal half the level of the actual losses during the global financial crisis. Even with this huge buildup of you know provisions or reserves for future problems, Banks still grew capital, still grew book value for the most part, and still for the most part cover their dividends sometimes by one, two, or, or three times. So, and banks are still you know, open for business. Yeah. The growth in deposits at Bank America and J.P. Morgan, wow! I mean, over the past yeah. year, they, they grew equal to the the fifth <clears throat> or sixth largest bank. So, I give the banks uh, for the second quarter earnings a a B plus. But when it comes to the outlook, Tom. Nobody knows. It's a very uncertain time, so you need to be ready for a variety of scenarios. I love having you on, Mike, as always. Twin Peaks of Pain, you have a way with words. Pair the Twin Peaks of Pain with the record revenues, the record income from investment banking and trading volumes. How much does this bring up political risk for the banks at a pretty unseemly time, the idea of profiting at a time of such economic pain? Well, look, banks are serving customers. And sometimes, like in March, banks were serving customers with record lending as revolvers were getting drawn down. In the second quarter, banks were serving customers by issuing debt to the capital markets, record debt issuance uh, year to date. And it's natural that you have strong trading that follows that. So whether you serve clients with lending or if you serve them with capital markets, you're still serving clients. So I'd say that criticism is more of a 20th century criticism and the 21st century you know, financial world, um, it, that you're serving the customer if you're a large bank. Looking forward, given the uncertainty, given the likely pain in the consumer that a lot of big bank executives are expecting, which financial firm is best positioned to increase profitability going forward based on these results? Well, look, you have the twin peaks of pain. Uh, the good news is that the reserves for those future losses, you know, have been built more than ever before. These are sobering times. We expect loan losses to increase by about threefold over the next couple of years. But the other part of the pain, the net interest margin should hurt the more plain vanilla banks more than anyone else. So we're going with the, the largest banks. You know, Citigroup, Bank America, and J.P. Morgan, because they are more diversified, they have more levers to pull, and digital banking, digital banking is being dominated by the largest banks because they have better technology. You're seeing the market share there, and you're seeing an acceleration right. of their five or ten year plans into the next year because customers have been forced out of the banks. Mike Mayo, can you explain why Goldman Sachs wants to be a plain vanilla bank? Of all the ironies, of all the ironies, Goldman Sachs' strategy has become more bank-like, and then you see the second quarter results, uh, they knock the cover off the ball with fantastic uh, underwriting, again, serving clients, uh, trading, the traditional roots of Goldman Sachs really came out. So this quarter showed you that Goldman Sachs is still Goldman Sachs like they've been for over the past 100 years and not what they want to be in the future.